Hello, everybody. I don't think anybody is going to be seriously doubting the basic premise that we live in a digital age right now. Now, what does it take to be successful in the digital age? What does it take to work well in the digital age? If you're an individual, if you're an organization, if you're a leader, if it is somebody who is watching this from outside, what do you do? What are the mantras to be successful in the digital age? Well, how do you win in a digital age? Uh, the Nitin Seth, now joining us, who's the CEO of Incedo. Nitin, great to have you with us. But you've written some of the answers, haven't you? You've come up with this you know, really handy book, which is a, a primer or a handbook or a manual for what it takes to win in a digital age. And we're going to take you through some of the mantras uh, uh, in a couple of minutes. But first of all, are you sure that this is a digital age? And this is it. The, the old offline world is very much 2021st century. We're now in a digital age and it's not going to change. No, we are uh, very certainly in a digital age. In the digital age, um, Vikram, you know, uh, you know, you know the World Economic Forum really well. And you know, the World Economic Forum you know, defines the fourth industrial revolution and it defines it as the digital age. Uh, you know, having said that, you know, digital age, you know, is something you know, which has, it's not something which has happened suddenly, you know, it has been happening for the last 25, 30 years. And it started with this whole digitization move from physical to, uh, to, to digital and the growth of internet and dot com e-commerce and it is it has been progressing but uh, i think it is fair to say that you know we are in the digital age it is it's a very all all consuming kind of trend you know it defines the way we lead our lives we consume products and services and therefore it impacts every business you know i don't know of a single industry uh, which is untouched by it um and, and and the rules you know you kind of talked about physical world versus digital world and and I think we've come to a point where some of the fundamental rules and and kind of principles of business are very, very different. Um, and if you, one of the very interesting things about digital Vikram is that there is you know, so much investment going into this thing. You know, there is seven trillion dollars you know, slated to be spent over the next three years. You know, that's like more than two times India's GDP. It's a really big number, but. The amazing thing is that you know statistic which people don't talk about is that 70 percent of that kind of does not achieve its full impact you know that's also a lot of money wasted and and you know and i think you know once you kind of get your head around that you know i think the the point that you started with you know becomes very clear that hey so much of this you know, big opportunity but so much of the failure is also happening because some of the fundamentals of this digital age are very very different so, so let me just take some of the cues, which, including those which I, which I got from the book. So fundamentally, I think everybody recognizes that we should do something on digital. There's not a single CEO, not a single company, no sane person will be saying, no, we have decided we're going to stay far away from, from digital. I mean, mostly everyone says we need to do something in digital. But now what is that something in digital that you should do is what the crux of the problem is, I think. And that's what I think the book is also trying to answer. And here's where there is a difference between uh, what you also call the digital natives and the legacy companies. Digital natives are born digital. They have some sort of an idea of what to do. Legacy companies have a bigger problem because they're also scared of cannibalizing their offline past. So they're, they're scared of what going digital could mean for their heritage. Absolutely, you, know, you you hit the nail on the head, uh, Vikram. That uh, uh, the legacy companies are very weighed down by their history, yeah. And you know, you know, Clayton Christensen's you know iconic book, you know, the Innovator's Dilemma, kind of put this puts this very well, right? That you know, any any disruptive change, you know, it kind of starts somewhat slowly, and then it really kind of builds up, um, and that's why. Um, the incumbents, you know, find it difficult to deal with disruptive change, and that is exactly uh, the situation we are in. Um, and and I think this whole thing about uh, digital transformation and you know how do you go about it is that much more of a problem uh, for legacy companies, you know, versus the digital natives. But my thesis also is Vikram that all is not lost. Yeah, for the legacy companies, you know, my my view is that you know we are still in relative relatively early stages of this digital age. It's like this five 
test match series, you know, taking a cricket analogy, you know, we are still in kind of, you know, lunch of day one of the first test match. There's already a lot of action that has happened by lunch. So we are all feeling very excited about it. But, you know, the, the reality is that still, there is still a lot to kind of play out, a lot to play out. So the early so it's not necessary. So that's interesting what you're saying. So you're saying just because you're a legacy company, it doesn't mean you're necessarily going to die. It, it, it means that you can figure out a way to be able to compete if you would take the like right lessons. Absolutely, absolutely. That's my entire thesis. That see, um, see, see the the legacy companies are very aware of what's happening around us. Yeah, they are, and they are. They're also trying to kind of. Uh, take a lot of initiatives around it. Now, see, the world is not completely moving from physical to digital. Yeah. You know, end of the day, as as customers, you know, we engage, you know, with the world in a certain way. Um, and, and, you know, there are there are set of things, you know, where, you know, where digital makes complete sense. You know, there are also many things, you know, where you need the human interaction, you know, where you need, you know, where you maybe want to go and, and you know, go into a branch or something. Yeah. So the, the physical infrastructure that the legacy companies have um, is is not, you know, it can it can be a challenge, but largely I think it's an asset if you know how to use it. Yeah. So okay. um, so I think as the legacy companies figure this out, yeah, uh, figure out the right business model. And most importantly, they are able to uh, to really evolve their culture. I think they will be a formidable force. Now, now uh, for, for, starters, for starters, many of the most successful online companies don't actually manufacture anything. They're platforms, they're other things. So somebody still has to be manufacturing all the things that are being sold in online companies and making the cars and the rest of it. You, you speak about a two-speed approach. Uh, and I found that an interesting concept. You want to just elaborate on that? Why do you think people should have a two-speed approach? See, the world we are in is uh, this digital age, and you know, I like to call it the VUCA world. You know, volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous. It's, it's kind of there's a lot happening here. Yeah. So long-term strategy, I think, means much less today in this world than, then, you know, maybe 10 years back, you know, this is very much about the movement. This is very much about the execution now. Yeah. So quick wins, getting started on specific problems is very important. Yeah. So that to me is the speed one. Yeah. Because unless and until you have like those quick wins, you will not get like the, the ball moving. But at the same time, if you, if it is just a bunch of individual actions, you know, you will end up with like, you know, like a, you know, like a spaghetti, you know, it, it, which doesn't make sense. So you do need to have the big picture as well. Yeah. So, so it is, you know, given the complexity of change in the digital age, it is very important to move with both speeds that, you know, you have the quick wins at the same time you're, you're working on the, on the big picture. Well, you know, I talk a lot about two speed, um, in the context of how we approach digital. And I al also have a broader thesis, you know, from a leadership mindset perspective that, you know, in this complex world, one of the more important skills for leaders is to master duality as a, as a leader, as a CEO, you're constantly, um, you know, you're bombarded with these seemingly contradictory set of objectives, you know, growth, profitability, short term, long term, uh, customers, employees, man, machine, so on and so forth. And, and this ability to, to master this duality as opposed to finding compromises between them, I think is, uh, to my mind, one of the seminal skills required in the digital age. Right. But, the, but, but I think I want to just take as a takeaway from that, I think it's an interesting point you make. Think about your long-term strategy. Be prepared for the fact that your long-term strategy could be different after a couple of years because it's a very fast evolving world uh, and things are changing. But in the meantime, do get quick wins. I think that's, a, that's, that's an interesting lesson, lesson to take away. Look, I know you have seven building blocks and I, I would like to get you to list all of them. But if you do that, no one's going to be reading your book. So why don't you, in a in a nutshell, tell us a couple of the building blocks that you think are really important for someone listening to this. Yeah. See, see the whole notion of building blocks to begin with, you know, and I think you mentioned it in the beginning that digital is kind of like this big thing. Yeah. And then the question also is where you get started. And see, the, the, 
the thing with digital is that because it's so so much happening you take you know you kind of look at one aspect you know oh i've done like a ai you know i've done something in ai or i've set up a you know some kind of a marketplace and i've done digital yeah so the you know the idea of the building blocks is to kind of lay out okay that how do you break up this complex problem into kind of logical set of things that you need to do yeah so so very very kind of simply the first building block is what i call the new rules of business you know what in the premise that we have been talking about for the past few minutes that hey the fundamentals are very different you know how do you and therefore the way you approach business needs to be very different we began to talk about strategy so historically it has been strategy and then execution right it's kind of like a linear relationship but in this digital age that's not true you know uh you know best laid out plans don't survive touch with reality you know it's like you know muhammad ali famously said that everybody has a plan till you get punched in the face and that happens all the time in the digital age so mm. the, it is lot more about execution and there is you know you you have like a very light strategy you kind of then very quickly get into execution what works you do more of what doesn't work you kill so it's a very recursive relationship between strategy and execution that just as one rule of business yeah and there are many things you need to think about the second building block is around industry maturity what i call industry maturity curves the for any business the starting point for what digital what should they should do in digital has to come from okay what is the context of my industry and how the customer needs and the competitive dynamics in the industry are evolving so that's the second thing you have to get a sense on the mm. third is is around technology you know while technology in in many sense this entire digital transformation is seen to be a technology transformation um and technology is indeed a starting kind of you know point for it but it is the entire digital game is lot more than just technology yeah but still that's a building block yeah the fourth building block is what i call global or global delivery model the entire yeah. nature of digital is such that it can't be put in a box you know the moment you go digital both your demand is global and your very likely your supply chain has to be global yeah so how do you think about it yeah the fifth building block and to my mind the biggest you know building block if i have to put these things to scale this with the biggest is organization transformation yeah so today the simple kind of equation is that business transformation is equal to digital transformation and digital transformation is equal to organization transformation now we talked about the legacy enterprises see all of them are investing tons of money in technology jp morgan alone you know it spend on technology is probably more than the entire investment going into into fintechs yeah so the issue is not a technology investment but the 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 kind of organization change they need to go through is humongous yeah and that yeah. itself is a very big topic now the so far we have talked at an enterprise level but hey what is an enterprise but a collection of individuals and my next two building blocks get to that you know so number 6 is about leadership you know what is the model for leadership and i have a very strong thesis and we can talk more about it that it has to be everybody has to have a has to be an entrepreneur whether you are in a startup or you are in a in a fortune 500 company you know you have to have an you have to be an entrepreneur yeah so that that to me is the model of leadership which is required and finally that what does it mean for young professionals you know what are the mindsets and skills they need to have so in a, in a summary that's the 550 page book um vikram that you know i've tried yeah, to I, i'm not going to try and go through all 550 pages on this so <laughs> i don't, don't think you would want me to but just to take a couple of the points right that you were talking about and look in them in some detail let's just look at the crux of of uh, of of some of the technologies uh, that that are being spoken about you're right the the crux of the digital issue itself is data right so organization and everyone have to learn to embrace data and how do you use data effectively is that perhaps the most important thing right now because the other the problem that used to be there when it used to be it is how do i manage my infrastructure how do i manage my digital infrastructure and that's not that big a problem anymore because a lot of it as you point out is going out into the cloud so that's one headache less but you better figure out what you're going to do with the data is that a it, fair way of it, data is uh is the you know is the kind of joker in the pack okay so you know if you look at uh, success and failure of digital you know 
data is to my mind the deciding factor in 80 90 percent of the cases okay so enterprises who have done you know who have done brilliantly so the google the facebook apple tesla there you can argue they're all data businesses yeah so the ability to to kind of bring together the enormous volume velocity variety of data together is a huge competitive advantage but equally it is it's not that easy mm. it is not that easy and that is where most you know you have this concept of data lake you know bringing all data together but it kind of often ends up being a data swamp yeah uh, because it just um, it's not easy uh, to kind of you know bring very different type of data together and make it normalize it, make it consistent, and start to draw insights from it. So uh, uh, you know, I, I think the as I said, that's fixing that is probably tougher than the old old problems of saying where do I put my servers? You don't need servers. Servers can exist. Infrastructure is much less of an issue, especially yeah. with cloud. You know, where infrastructure has now become more like a shared service and very scalable. Yeah. I don't think anybody is crying because of infrastructure. Um, data is certainly, uh, if not the biggest issue, it is probably one of the one of the biggest issues that not just technology uh, leaders are facing, but CEOs are facing. Looking at some other technologies and the big buzzwords around it, right? When you're talking about the, when the CEO walks inside a, a, an organization that says, all right, we got to get digital. The first thing the person says is, we got to do something in AI. Right now, that's become almost a catch-all phrase for some mysterious AI is going to descend and solve all of our problems. But I think one of the things that you touched upon in the book, and it's an actual learning that we at Editorji, for example, have had, is AI works best with humans. A human, uh, a human AI hybrid solution is probably at this stage, any at any rate, more likely to be effective than purely saying I'm leaving everything to AI. Would that be the advice you'd give companies by and large? See the 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 general understanding and perception of ai is colored a lot by by movies and, and kind of you know uh, you know science fiction and this skynet and terminator and ai is about to come and destroy the world either ai is solving is solving all the problems of the world mysteriously and miraculously or is destroying the world mysteriously and miraculously yeah it is you know technically you know what you know what we call you know generalized ai yeah that you know ai has human like capabilities, you know, and can, you know, solve a very, very wide variety of problems. Yeah. In reality, see, AI has actually moved from hype to reality over the last three years, Vikram. Yeah. It has moved from proof of concept to now proof of scale. So AI is very much at the ANI level, at the, at the narrow intelligence level, not necessarily. It is, it is, it is specific AI. It is specific yeah, AI, AI, not AGI. Yeah, it is not the generalized, you know, AI that, you know, is more popular. Now, the specific AI is for, you know, very specific use cases. And, you know, to your earlier point about data, it, it relies on, on data. Yeah, that, you know, where you have deep, very deep data sets, you know, you are able to kind of be a lot more effective with the AI. So it's very interesting that in normal kind of logic is that you look at a problem, a customer problem, and then you say, okay, how do I apply AI? It's kind of you know, almost become the reverse that you say, okay, where do I have deep, high quality data sets? And that, you know, the, that's where I will use AI. So it is specialized AI will, of course, work with, you know, work in a, you know, you, you need human, uh, you know, to kind of bring things together. Uh, so I think the mantra is very much AI plus human, uh, you know, augmented intelligence, you know, as, you know, we're also calling it, you know, as opposed to just this, science fiction notion of AI. Talking about being overhyped, um, there was a clear hint that I seem to be picking up from you in the book that blockchain, um, a lot of people feel that, it, that well, cryptocurrency almost certainly is overhyped or dubious, depending on whom you're talking to. Uh, blockchain itself, is that a technology which you feel everyone should look at or wait and watch? No, see, blockchain is a see is a little bit of a complex kind of you know trend to get our um, arms around. See, blockchain is not a like a very quick fix. You know, we talk about two speed. Yeah, um, 
AI is can be leveraged in a very two speed fashion, Vikram. Blockchain, a lot more difficult to do that. Yeah, yeah. blockchain is a, is a kind of a systemic change and it is the end to end system, not just within your, your organization, but cutting across the chain. Yeah. So, so it is, it is one of those things where it takes a lot of time and kind of infrastructure development to really for blockchain to be effective. Yeah. So if you look over a short period of time, two, three, four years, five years, you may not see much. Yeah. But, you know, once in different sectors, and we are certainly seeing that in payments playing out now, for sure. But, you know, in many other sectors, you know, when blockchain happens, it will be humongously disruptive and transformational. It will change the way business is done. Yeah? Okay. Because, you know, a lot of the basis of many business models is intermediation. Is intermediation. And that at every point of intermediation, you have a tax. Yeah, you're collecting tax and that will go away with blockchain. So it is tremendously disruptive, but it takes, it's not a quick fix. Yeah. Um, so and, 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 you know, my point in the book was, you know, it's not a point against blockchain. In fact, you know, I, you know, I'm, I really get fascinated by this technology, but all the hype around cryptocurrency kind of, you know, distorts the conversation around blockchain. Yeah. I think that's a very val valid point because there can be doubts over the cryptocurrencies of it. Blockchain almost certainly will have lots of values. It's a very foundational value, technology change. Cryptocurrency is a layer which is on top of blockchain, and it's not it's not you could have your doubts in cryptocurrency and space. It's a use case of blockchain. It's a use case of use blockchain. case. And you could argue about that use case. You could certainly argue about some of the more dubious coins that are coming on top of blockchain. It doesn't mean that I mean you can use the internet for all sorts of things from having conversations like this to watching stuff you shouldn't be watching so it doesn't mean that the technology is bad but yeah i i, I see your point all right i as i said i don't want you to read out all 550 pages uh, you know on this conversation but if you had a message to give to leaders uh, as they're looking at this transition what would that one message be and you can also perhaps also add a, a message to young professionals would that be a different message yeah i think i think different uh... A message which is the same, but also something different I want to add. So for leaders, uh, and I briefly touched upon it, that you know, my message is that whoever you are, wherever you are, you know, you have to be an entrepreneur. You know, you have to be an entrepreneur. The whole, you know, uh, you know, this whole thing about, you know, from manager to leader, you know, you know, we have been talking about for, for a long time, but in the digital age, it is an absolute reality. Why is it a reality? Because it's so dynamic. It's VUCA. Yeah, it's VUCA, so it's constantly changing. The only way you can win is if you are creating your future, if you are creating the context. Yeah, so you have to be a creator. Whoever you are, you have to be a creator. You cannot be a manager. And when you, whenever you create, you have to take risks. Yeah, you have to take risk. Yeah, so those two things to me are fundamental kind of things, you know, for a leader. You have to create and you have to take risk and you bring it together. And that's an entrepreneur. Yeah. So whether you are in a startup, whether you are in a in a traditional family owned business or you are in a Fortune 500 company, you know, you have to be an entrepreneur. So that's kind of my main main message for leaders. For our young colleagues, you know, what I would say is that, you know, hey, this is the age of abundance. Yeah. You know, when I was growing up, it was still kind of you know, in the you know, eight, 70s, 80s and so on. It was still an era of relative scarcity. The yeah. choices were limited. Yeah. This is the age of abundance. Yeah. Now the implication of the age of yeah, abundance. Jobs are a bit scarce right now, so you shouldn't say that too soon. De depends, yeah. So you know the see, but just the opportunities, the way you can think about opportunities is so so vast. You know, when you and I went to school, Vikram, it was okay. You know, you, are, you become an engineer, you become a doctor, you become a lawyer, you know, there were like three or four you know yeah. options you could choose from you know this is there are so many options you can choose so i think it really does liberate you to kind of you know find your thing you know find your purpose and and i yeah. think you don't find purpose sitting in a room yeah yeah and for that you have to go yeah. out and you have to experiment yeah so you know that's what i would the other the yeah. other advice to youngsters starting their own company which i thought was really interesting uh, that you put out was make sure you have funding. Sometimes people ignore that, push that off to the very end. I have a great product, I have everything. 
if you don't, if that funding tap is not open, you're at some point going to run into trouble. Yeah, and and you know, and that's the that's the you know you know I talked about being an entrepreneur for leaders, but I I would I would you know say that to all all the young colleagues that you know become an entrepreneur. You know, I I, I see the digital age fundamentally is for entrepreneurs. Yeah, yeah, so become an entrepreneur, and yes, do be very conscious. You know, before you take the big flight, you know, make sure that you're well anchored, and funding is one of those things. Okay. But uh, I think funding is much less of a challenge today than it was maybe ten years back. So I think there is a great opportunity. I think digital age is a great democratizing force. Yeah, it yeah. is democratizing um, access to information, to knowledge, to capital. Uh, and I really think, you know, we you know we just had the 75th, you know, Republic Day that you know this is you know this is kind of like a independence movement, especially for India, you know, because it's still a, such a vast country with huge disparity in education and and just quality of of you know knowledge and 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 you know opportunities available. You know, digital is that equalizing, democratizing force you know, because with digital. Um, the traditional barriers to entry are much less relevant. Yeah, much less relevant. You know, scale was such a huge issue. Capital was such a huge issue. Um, those are those are much less relevant today. So it's a great, great time to go out and venture and kind of you know build your own business. Yeah, and especially look at the number of, of Indians who are running global companies, right? Starting. Looking at, I'm looking at you and you know, and then from Sundar Pichai to Satya Nadella to everybody, you know, the Indians out there everywhere, CEOs of, of big global companies, and you know that's that also is a, is a path that I think youngsters would would want to follow. All right, I think we're going to leave it there. But one last question that I have for you: one thing, just one thing that you wish you had learned in business school. <laughs> okay, you know. Uh... You know, I, I think I went through business school and, and then I joined McKinsey. Uh, so, you know, with this, and I think the frame was that of an insecure overachiever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, you know, you're very kind of, you know, obsessed about, you know, you know, you are kind of at the core a little insecure and you kind of set these high goals, ambition, and then you kind of drive yourself very hard towards it. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, as I've gone through, Kind of the course of life you know last 25 30 years of career you know i've kind of realized that hey you know life is kind of just very kind of unpredictable and it's kind of just you know you can't control every aspect of it yeah mm. and i think this whole thing about you know having kind of this bigger picture view of life not seeing it as a series of sprints and you have to win each sprint to get to the next one but kind of you know being a lot more in the movement being a lot more aware in the movement kind of experimenting a lot more, you know, taking a lot more risks, um, you know, investing a lot more in relationships. So, you know, when yeah. I joined McKinsey, you know, the managing partner then, you know, said something very interesting that to succeed, either you need to know something or you need to know someone. And I thought, hey, what is he saying? It has to be about knowing something. But then I, over a period of time, I realized the power of relationships and, you know, how... Yeah. how so that's what I would say, you know, that the paradigm, I think, with which I kind of grew, you know, the insecure overachiever, you know, can be a bit limiting as well. And you realize it later. Yeah, there is so much richness to life and to Good. explore it fully um, and to kind of, you know, and to be in the present moment. Um, it yeah. is not philosophical, but that's what I would encourage colleagues to young That's colleagues. Those are interesting lessons. And as the young would say, especially in the digital age, that probably can be translated into learn to chill dude or you know, something like that. <laughs> or, or, or appropriate word, something, something in that line. All right, Nitin, thank you so much. Great having you with us. Thank you, Vikram. Pleasure talking to you.